Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSP lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. So this is the penultimate lecture in this uh, series of 60 lectures. In the next lecture, the last one I am going to summarize and conclude about whatever we discussed in the last uh, 59 lectures or so. So let me continue solving some more problems in this lecture. Here is a question. The iron 3 ruthenium 2 analog of Prussian blue, so you are all familiar with Prussian blue, it has iron 3 and iron 2 compound and here we are talking about a hybrid of uh, iron 3 and ruthenium 2. So this is Fe 3 4 times, Ru Cn 6 3 times, 18 H2O. This is a dark purple complex unlike the homolyptic homo logos analog of iron iron that is intense blue in color. So this is a dark purple complex which shows an IVCT intervalence charge transfer or metal to metal charge transfer band at 495 nanometer. Compare its properties such as delocalization of electrons with the Prussian blue. So that means when we talk about delocalization, it is nothing but the charge transfer. So the presence of an IVCT that is intervalent charge transfer band that means metal to metal charge transfer band that indicates the delocalization of electrons in the mixed metal system. So one is a donor, one is acceptor. So here we to see the electrons are moving from the acceptor to the donor that we call it as delocalization. In fact, all transitions, charge transfer transitions we will see delocalization. To what extent the delocalization happens would tell about the intensity of that band. The energy of the IVCT band is inversely proportional to the extent of electron delocalization between the metal centers. The energy of this charge transfer transition is inversely proportional to the extent of electron delocalization between the two metal centers. So that means more delocalization results in lower energy IVCT transitions. So more delocalization to occur, what happens? The energy should be very close to the matching or so. In that case, what happens? The movement of electrons is quite free. As a result, what happens? Delocalization would be more. And when the delocalization is more, the electron transfer also would be very easy. That is the reason it is energy is inversely proportional to the extent of electron delocalization and delocalization results in lower energy. So that is more delocalization means lower the energy of IVCT transitions. As a result of delocalization, the shift in energy from 680 nanometer and if you calculate that one, it will come frequency will be 14,700 that means 1 over 680 will be wave number e equals 1 by lambda. So you can do that, it comes around 14,700 centimeter minus 1 for Prussian blue. And then here it is 495 in that is 20,200 in case of this mixed iron ruthenium system. This indicates greater extent of electronic delocalization in the mixed iron ruthenium analog which is in fact dark purple. So that is the comparison here. So what it says is compare its properties. So here delocalization is more extensive compared to iron and pure Prussian blue. As a result, what happens here? The energy required is much lower for transition. So all ruthenium analog, if you consider all ruthenium analog means Ru3 and Ru2 analog, it is a dark green complex, shows an IVCT band at 1000 nanometer, so indicating greater delocalization. It is even more delocalized system we come across in case of a pure ruthenium analog of Prussian blue. So then uh, here another question, the allowed terms for D7 are? If we calculate some of them allowed transitions and find out the term symbols, those term symbols are given here, allowed ones for D7 system, that is 2H, 2G, 4F, 2F, 2D, 2D, 4P, 2P. Among them, identify the ground term. Well, of course, by just looking at, you should be able to tell the one that has a higher spin multiplicity, 2S plus 1 value. And eventually, if 2S plus 1 is identical for both, 
then we come across this one as well as this one. In that case, you have to consider the L value, highest L value. Highest L value will be here, F. If you take S, P, D, F, 0, 1, 2, 3. So, 3 is there here for this one, whereas 1 is for this one. So, you can say without any hesitation, this is the one. This is the blindly, but on the other hand, you can also solve this one, ground state. Ground state, you can have electronic arrangement like this. Then you can find out 2S plus 1 value here. 2s1 plus c equals to 2 into uh, 3 by 2 plus 1. So, this is equals 4 and then L is 3. So, f is there. So, f this is the 1 and then if you want to find out the j value here, j will be here L plus s because this is more than half filled. So, 3 plus 3 by 2. So, equals 9 by 2. So, this will be 9 by 2. So, of course, here this is the one. For example, if you want to know what is the micro state for D7, so you should be able to do it that is n factorial over r factorial into n minus r factorial and of course, n is the total capacity of the subshell here d orbital 10 factorial and then r is 7 electrons are there 7 factorial and this is 3 factorial. So, one can write here n factorial 10 factorial over 7 factorial into 7 10 minus 7 factorial. So, this is equal you can write 7 factorial into 120. So, you can calculate this way. Okay, so, now let us look into another example here problem. In its electronic spectrum, hexa aqua vanadium 3 plus exhibits two absorption bands, one at 17,800 new one and the second one is at 25,700. The correct assignment of these bands respectively is. So, here already four options are given, we have to choose the correct one. Uh, before that you have to identify what system it is. It is a D2 system and you should know that D2 system comes under the second category of D2, D3, D7, D8 system. They show three transitions. So, here it is a special case. I would tell you later why it shows only two absorption. It shows two absorption. So, it is D2 system and in D2 system from simple Orgel diagram you should be able to find out which is the ground term here and then here the ground term is this one. So, here it is there, here it is there and then among them which one is correct you have to choose. Let us say you are choosing this one. So, high energy transition will be this one and this one will be the high energy one. And now, just go back to this Orgel diagram written for uh, all this D2, D3, D7, D8 octahedral as well as tetrahedral complexes of high spin complexes only. Orgel diagram holds good only for high spin complexes. If you want to use for both high spin as well as low spin, you have to use Tanube di Sugano Tanube diagram. So, that is you have to every system you have to have a Sugano Tanube diagram. So, here you can see here these are the two transitions are there 1 3 T 1 G 2 3 T 1 G P higher in energy and 3 T 1 G F 2 3 T 2 G F is the second one. So, this is shown here these two and then the question is why only two and of course, you also know why this is deflected off. We also showed you about lack of parameters and all those things you can go back and check. And now here the ligand field strength of water results in transitions occurring close to the crossover point between 3 T 1 G P and 3 T 2 G F here this. So, as a result what happens here of course, this is not a problem. This is more pronounced when you come for this side that means D 7 system or D 8 system here. This is opposite of D 2. So, D 8 system it comes more here. As a result what happens? The energy difference is very small and it merges and you get only two transitions not three transitions. Uh, so, they are not resolved. So, vanadium 3 plus ion with three different ligands. If you consider instead of hexa aqua let us have ammonia, chloro and aqua something like that. In that case we can see three distinct peaks are absorptions here. So, now 
let us come back to again this mass NMR related problem. This compound has the molecular formula C9 H11 NO2 included in this problem are the infrared spectrum, infrared spectrum is given here and then 1H NMR spectrum is also given and some 13 C NMR spectral data is also given here. So, you have to depict the structure or you have to find out the right compound, molecular formula is there, you have to identify and write the structural formula or structure of the molecule. So, first when you look into this one, you should know that we have carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen is there and then we can also find out hydrogen deficiency index here. For that one, it is very simple 9 plus 1 minus 11 by 2 plus half. So, now if you take it here, 10 and it will be 11 by 2 means 10, 10 and half, it will become 5. So, we have 5 here. So, here hydrogen deficiency is 5 here. So, they have to find out that means at least there will be a ring, there will be a ring here plus 4 double bonds will be there here. So, this information comes from hydrogen deficiency index and also you should see here there is a CO is there, you should remember carbonyl group is there and also you can see here any intense bands or any other 1200 something is there, you will check those things now. And also some information is there, just look into how many signals are there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 signals are there, all are different. And then some splitting, further splitting is also shown for G, F and E, D, G, F and E, D and G, F, E and D. So, the, it is in the aromatic region, uh, further splitting is also shown here. And whereas here we have a quadrant and we have a triplet and also we have a small one, it represents maybe OH or NH2 or something like that. So, we should remember these things in mind and we shall try to work out the structure. Now, the solution means first calculate hydrogen deficiency index, this we have already calculated, it is 5 and all of the spectra shown in this problem suggest an aromatic ring, aromatic ring is there and plus 4 double bonds are there, the remaining index 1 CO group found in 1708, okay, that is also there and this value for the carbonyl group is too high for an amide, so it is not an amide, it is in a reasonable place for a conjugated ester. So, that means it is a conjugated ester, the 1705 gives that information. While NO2 present in the formula suggests a possible nitro group, this cannot be the case because we need two oxygen for the ester functional group. So, since we need two for one carbonyl and ester means COOR, uh, then you do not have any other oxygen to think of NO2. So, NO2 is absent by simple reason you can rule out the possibilities of having a NO2. If NO2 is not there, the other possibilities a primary amine or secondary amine type. So, the doublet about 3400 in the infrared spectrum is perfect for a primary amine. This value stretching frequency suggests it is NH stretch that suggests that it is a primary amine. So, that means we found out CO and there is a O and the NH2 is there. Then 13 C NMR spectrum has 9 peaks which corresponds to 9 carbon atoms. That means all are unique. We have 9 different type of carbon atoms in the molecule. The ester group carbon appears at 167. So, CO is appears at 167. The remaining downfield carbons are attributed to the 6 unique aromatic ring carbons. From this, we know that ring is not symmetrically substituted. Since we have so many, it indicates that certainly we do not have a very symmetrical structure at the aromatic carbon atoms. The DEPT results confirm the presence of two carbon atoms with no attached protons. So, that indicates we have two carbons without having any hydrogen atoms that is 131 and 147 by DPT measurement experiment and four carbon atoms with one attached proton and four of them have one attached proton here that means we have CH unit here. From this information we know that the ring is disubstituted. So, that means these four in the aromatic region are there that means out of C6H6 to have gone with it is two substituted one. That means, if amine group is there and if ester group is there, it has to be on the aromatic ring. The ring must be disubstituted because four protons appear in the aromatic ring. It should be disubstituted and also it is not symmetrically substituted. That means, there are no groups in the relative para position, one four position. Now, this information is given. So, here one, 
So this one, no peaks are there. That indicates they have no hydrogen atoms are there in this one. So now, this is the structure for this molecule. This is, we have CH2 and CH3 is there. And then this is the ester group. And then this is substituted something like this. The reason why it is substituted like this, this one would show a triplet. And then this one would show a singlet or it can be coupled with this one. And this will show a doublet. And this will also show a doublet here. So based on this, the structure is given. This is the correct structure. So this pattern suggests one three substituted pattern rather than one four or one two. One four or one two have a little bit more symmetry. They are ruled out. The key observation is that the proton F is narrowly spaced triplet or a doublet of doublet suggesting 4J coupling but with no 3J couplings. In other words, the proton must not have in any adjacent protons. It is sandwiched between two non-proton groups, amino and carbonyl. Protons G and F appear downfield relative to protons E and D because of the D shielding effects of the anisotropy of the CO group. This further information we can draw from the positions of these peaks in the NMR spectrum. The aromatic out of plane bending bands in the infrared spectrum suggest meta substitution 680, 760 and 880. This comes by practice. If you solve more and more problems, you will be familiar with the stretching frequencies and the, that corresponds to the groups and their positions. The 1H NMR spectrum shows an ethyl group because of the quartet and a triplet. Quartet and triplet is a typical of ethyl group present in a molecule, 4.3 and 1.4 respectively for the CH2 and CH3. So CH3 comes at 1.4 as a triplet and 4.3 a quartet for methylene protons. So finally, a broad NH2 peak integrating for two protons appears in the 1H NMR at 3.8 ppm. 3.8 ppm, we have saw a very tiny peak. The compound is ethyl 3 amino benzoate. You can see this is for NH2. So, this is the molecule here. So, now with this information, you go back and try to analyze once again the positions and how they look like. The expansion is also given for this aromatic region that should tell you the interaction of some of these nuclei together to give different type of multiplicity for each signal. Now, let us look into one more example. This compound has the molecular formula C5H7NO2. Following are the infrared 1HNMR 13C NMR spectra. So, C5H7NO2 is there. Again, we can go for hydrogen index deficiency. Here it is 6 minus 7 by 2 is 3.5 and plus 0.5 here. So, this indicates this is 3, this is going to be 3 here. So, hydrogen deficiency index is 3 here and also you should remember 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 signals are there and this is for TMS, 5, 13C signals are there and then we have a quadrate and a triplet is there. Again, probably a ethyl group is there that should come automatically to your mind. And then we have one, this is coming in the region where CH2 and CH3 aliphatic are expected, but it is not coupled, means it is isolated, that we should remember. Then we have here again a CO group is there, and again it indicates here probably we have a ester group here. So, with this information, let us try to analyze the spectra and elucidate the structure. Now, we calculate an index of hydrogen deficiency of 3, we already calculated. So, the infrared spectrum reveals, just go back to infrared spectrum, one more I forgot. So, this is characteristic of C triple point N nitril group here, around 2300 something. So, now we have CO and we have ester group and also we have C triple point N. So, this information is there now. So, now the infrared spectrum reveals the source of unsaturation implied by an index of 3, a nitril group at 20 to 60. So, it unsaturation is 2 for this one. And then we have a carbonyl group 1. So, that is taken care of hydrogen index deficiency. So, one triple bond is there and one double bond is there. The frequency of the carbonyl absorption indicates an unconjugated ester. So, this is an unconjugated ester. It is coming around little higher 1747. It should be little bit lower around 1710, 17 up to 1710 you can see conjugation. The appearance of several strong CO bands near 1200 confirm the presence of an ester group, so CO group. 
the 13 C NMR spectrum shows 5 peaks and this is consistent with the molecular formula which contains 5 carbon atoms. That means all 5 carbon atoms are unique and then the carbon atom in the C triple bond N group has a characteristic value of 113 ppm. In addition, the carbon atom in the ester appears at 163 ppm. One of the remaining carbon atoms, 63 probably lies next to an electronegative oxygen atom. The remaining two carbon atoms which absorb at 25 and 14 are attributed to the remaining methylene and methyl carbon atoms which are coupled in 1HNMR to show a triplet as well as a quadrant. So now the following are the, in the same thing I am coming back here to write the structure. So this is the structure here, the structure is we have CH3, CH2, CH2, CN. So you can see here this will be a quadrant and this will be a triplet for this one, this one and then this one should show a unique, a singlet here and then of course, see these are the three peaks we come across and then C triple bond N is there. Since we got a peak B singlet that is for methylene which is not coupled to anything. In adjacent carbons, carbon atoms you do not have any CH and also this is little bit tough in the D shielded region because next to CO group here. So, you can see here now. So, this one is for this here P and then quadrant you can see here and then triplet is here and then CO you can identify here and this is there and then CN is here. So, this is a structure. So, I mean how nicely we can interpret the data with little bit of knowledge about the positions of absorption bands in various spectral patterns. So, now let us look into few examples here. An organic compound X is composed of carbon, hydrogen and nitrogen with carbon constituting over 60 percent of the mass mass spectrum of A shows a molecular ion at m by z equals 112. Answer the following questions. So, this is again, it is already some information is there. 60 percent is carbon. So, 60 percent means 100 it is, if you take 60 percent of that one, there should be at least 7 carbon atoms should be there. So, you can do like this and then yeah, 70 to 60 percent. So, it is 70 to 6 carbon atoms will be there and then corresponding H12 N2 you can find out from rule 13 easily you can do that one from rule 13 and uh, that should tell you. I have shown quite a number of molecules in my earlier slides. So, that shows you 112 once with that one you can also calculate hydrogen index that will give you 2. So, this is the answer. So, plausible molecular form for X is this one C6 H12 N2 and then hydrogen deficiency index is 2 here. Similarly, one can also do the same structure, but what happens here we do not have nitrogen, we have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen is there and then again if you find out it comes around C6H8O2, two oxygen atoms are there and hydrogen index is 3 here. Next you can do the same thing here, here M by Z is 180 and carbon is 60, so 6 into 12, so basically what happens 108, 108 and 8 uh, hydrogen and 64, 4 are there and it comes around 180 and here in this one if you calculate hydrogen index that is 6 here. So, here one example is there a liquid compound gave a mass spectrum in which the molecular ion appears as a pair of equal intensity peaks at m by e equals 122 and m by z equals 124. Small fragment ion peaks are seen at 107 and 109. And here again you should notice here m by z equals 79, 80, 81, 82, this is very important and this is also very important uh, to see what kind of isomer is there here. So, what happens these things are characteristic of isomers. If you have the same structural isomers are there with three or more possible structures in that case some of these will give you a precise value and then the large fragment ions are at m by z equals 43. So, now it is 122 and 122 is there means probably m, m plus 2 if you say then let us take 123 as the mass. If you take 123 as a mass we use 13 rule. So, here so 9 will be there 9 and then if you take So, it is 9 plus 6. So, that means basically C9 H15 this will be because 
this 50, 123. So, from this one, the moment we see here uh, 79, 80, bromine is there. So, bromine, let us take 80. So, 80 will come by taking C6 H8. So, that means basically we have to take out this one. Now, it becomes C3 H7 Br. When C3 H7 Br is there, then the when we look into the fragment, we can easily write this one. The formula can be CH3, CH2, CH2 Br. This is one possibility. So, what is the other possibility is? So, now this is 1 bromo and it is 2 bromo propane. So, now we have to distinguish between these two. At this stage with this information we cannot really tell unless we look into those things or some of these things are characteristic of 2 bromo propane. I, let me show you now the spectra here you know mass spectra of both the isomers I have here we can see this is for 1 bromopropane and this is for 2 bromopropane. So, here we have these two and here we have these two and here it is missing here in this one and also further what it says 79 to 82 we are seeing peaks yes we are seeing 79 to 82 uh, peaks are there and then we are seeing 41 and 39. So, 39 is there, 41 is there and here it is missing. So, from this by comparing and looking into the some of these fragments, we should be able to tell that this is not one bromopropane, but two bromopropane and we should uh, focus some of these things very minute information that looks like very trivial, but when it comes to identifying the right isomer, this is very, very important. So, let me stop here, continue in my next lecture about uh, summarizing and concluding whatever the lectures we discussed in the last 59.